evening everyone. We can't actually start the planning meeting until 7 o'clock, but I do have a, an introduction to read out and that does take a couple of minutes so I can proceed with that. It's uh, clear for everybody's here anyway. So good evening and welcome to the Working Borough Council Planning Committee. And a few points before we commence. We have a PA system, which you'll notice. Mo mobile phones should be off or on silent and no fire drill is planned. The proceedings are filmed and will be available on the Wakeman Borough website. You will see from the camera position that committee members, council officers and registered speakers will normally be recorded. But speakers may ask not to be filmed, but their comments will be audio recorded. The planning committee is made up of nine elected members. I now just ask those members to introduce themselves <coughs> and I will start with um, Bill on my left. I'm Bill Soane, I'm the member for Lobham in Woodley. Philip Holsworth, member for uh, Willis. Uh, John Jarvis, member for Twyford. James Ross, uh, member for Working Without. Uh, Wayne Smith, member for Hurst. <coughs> Michelle Shepherd today, member for Winnish. Malcolm Richard, member for Norris in Working Town. I'm John Kaiser. Member for Barkham, Vice Chair. And Tim Bolton Hawkden in Lower Early. We are supported and adv advised by a variety of professional council officers, and now I'll ask those people to introduce themselves, starting on my far right. Madeline uh, Shopland, Democratic Services. Callum Wyman, Clerk to the Committee. Mary Serring, Solicitor, Advising the Committee. Uh, Justin Turvey, Lead Officer for Development Management. And Roger Johnson, Highways Development Management. Right, thank you very much. And the case officer, I will, uh, the case officer, I will introduce at the relevant time when that application is um, being discussed. Right, the procedure. This is a quasi-judicial committee with formal set procedures and conduct. Firstly, the planning officer will present each application. Then I will call in turn only those who are pre-registered to speak. Please come forward to the table. The microphone is controlled by the grey button on the base. The time limit of three minutes for each category of speaker will be strictly enforced, so please ensure you get your key points across within your allotted time. Members of the committee are interested in the quality of what you have to say and not for how long that you speak. And again, I emphasise that only those who are pre registered to speak may do so. Um, Following the planning officer's presentation and the comments of registered speakers, the planning committee members will consider, question and seek clarification for the application and hopefully reach a decision which may or may not agree with the officer's recommendation. Finally, a reminder, the local planning authority's role is to determine any valid planning application using local and national planning policy. Our role is not to suggest alterations to schemes, whether they're a good idea or indeed needed whether they are too costly or whether there are alternative uses. Thank you very much. And now we have reached 10 o'clock, we can move on to the agenda. <coughs> so, first one item would be apologies, but looking around the room, I can see um, everyone's here. So the next item is the minutes of the previous meeting. Are there any amendments that need to be made to those? So, we'll vote in favour of them, please. That's unanimous. Right. Next item is declarations of interest. I do know one member is going to speak. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I, have, I have listed uh, number one now from Slane this evening on the basis that it appears to me that the pro proposal would not be unacceptable in terms of harm and impact on the countryside. However, I want to make it clear that I have not made up my mind on the proposal and I will only do so when I've heard representations from the planning officer members and any other speakers that we have with us this evening. Thank you very much. Does anybody else need to declare any interest? Okay. Right, hopefully we don't have any applications deferred or withdrawn as we only have two on the agenda. Yes, no, sure. Excellent. Right, then the first application then is agenda item H8 on page 15. It's Rangers College. It's a full application for the demolition of the existing store and erection of all weather multi-use games area with flood lighting. It's before the committee as it's been listed by Councillor Baker and the officer is Simon Taylor. Over to you. Uh, the application involves the um, construction of the multi-use <coughs> uh, sports pitch uh, in Wangles College in Woodley. Um, the area in question is 
highlighted in blue here, the area to the east of that, there is an existing uh, multi-use games area um, that has approval from 2016. The um, sports pitch will be fenced by 3.2 metre high fence around the perimeter and there will be eight floodlights built to a height of 15.5 metres. The application was consulted to Council's Environmental Health Officer in terms of uh, a review of um, concerns with respect to um, noise and light spillage and to Council's Ecology Officer in terms of any impact on bats and to Council's Highways Officer. It was also consulted externally to Sport England in terms of any uh, impacts upon uh, loss of existing sporting facilities. It was notified to surrounding neighbours, um, surrounding the school on the east and western sides of the school. Uh, a total of eight uh, submissions were received. Um, the basis of those submissions relate to um, noise from the use of the facility, <coughs> um, light spillage from the, the lights that were being used up to uh, 10 p.m. at night, the extent of the hours of use um, and the effect upon the amenity of surrounding residents and traffic issues associated with the use of it. Um, the application is found uh, considered to be acceptable um, in terms of noise impact. Council's Ecology uh, Environmental Health Officer, Health Officer sorry, has um, reviewed the proposal, raised some concerns, and requested the provision of a um, noise report prior to the commencement or the use of the uh, facility. Um, light spillage was reviewed in terms of the impact upon um, surrounding residents and the bat colony, uh, sorry, nearby bat habitats and the railway line to the north. Um, the slide currently on the projector is uh, showing the light spillage. The lights are 15.5 metres high, primarily so that the projection of the light is downwards onto the sports pitch rather than um, more away from the, um, the facility if they're at a lower height. Um, traffic was considered acceptable on the basis that um, it would alleviate concerns with peak movement of, of um, students by allowing after school use and the evening use could be accommodated within the existing um, parking facilities at the school which totals 175 spaces. Um, in that respect, given that the amenity impacts were considered to be acceptable, the hours of use which are to 10 p.m. nightly were considered <coughs> subject to the provision that there be no um, use at bank holidays and Sundays limited to 6 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Right, thank you very much. Right, the first registered speaker then is Tom Barker representing Woodley Town Council. Town Council, would you like to come forward? Welcome. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Tom Barker. I'm a Woodley Town Councillor for the Coronation Ward for this application for help. Um, when, I, when this came to our committee, several issues were discussed, and uh, the two main ones are, uh, well, the, the minor one actually is around the disposal of construction waste, which should be removed from the site. Now, whilst I recognise that the planning officer has dismissed this as an issue, saying that we limited ways. May I remind the committee that the storage shed being removed is not a small garden shed. What you see on the site location map is a structure which is about a third of the total space of the whole proposed multiple use games area or MUGA. Whilst it may not warrant a full blown construction method statement or plan, we believe it should have some condition imposed which says something along the lines um, that all waste will be taken off site or if this is not possible, um, for um, the, the, to dispose in a safe and environmentally friendly way. <coughs> the major issue uh, is regarding the hours of operation. Uh, first of all, I acknowledge the already agreed reduction um, from the original 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week to 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. six <coughs> days and Saturdays and 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sundays and not only on a public uh, bank holiday. This is a welcome move, uh, but we think it's not enough. The application mentions several times the current hours of operation for the existing MUGA, 
but this is a much smaller site. The light pollution from 10 meter lights and the noise from this smaller site will always be a lot lower than this new site, which is probably three times its size and with 15 meter lights, or 15 and a half, as uh, the officer said. On this basis, we believe they are not comparable in terms of what is approved. Uh, the Woodford Park facility is probably of similar size and similar demographic, and it is close to surrounding homes, and has an operating limit of 9 p.m., and which we would like to see applied here uh, during, this, during the week. The extra hour on Saturday would probably be acceptable. Uh, I'd like, also like to focus on the Sunday hours of operation. This location is a semi-rural one with a fair amount of tranquility on Sunday. Allowing the operation to continue to 6 p.m. will destroy the peacefulness of that quiet Sunday and will impact residents in their gardens, at least during the summertime, which is probably uh, the, the peak period of this operation. The noise mostly impacts residents in Denmark Avenue and could be addressed by the extension of the acoustic barrier. If such an extension is not accepted, then we would propose a new closing time of 4 p.m. on Sunday. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you very much. And the next speaker I have is Bill Bell, who's a resident. Would you like to come forward? Welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is William Bell, I'm a neighbour of Wangels College. Uh, the neighbours of Wangels College have objected this planning application on a number of issues, but key issues, flood lighting and noise. I would like to present to the committee the concerns about the impact of lighting, and my fellow neighbour, Mr Mortimer, will, will concentrate on noise, but I actually have to read his statement because unfortunately he's ill today. Um, my property and my neighbour's property in Copps Mead are on the boundary of Wangels College, adjacent to the sports ground and in direct line of sight for the proposed development with no buildings or trees to obscure the impact of floodlights. The historic and current situation is that there are no street lights in Copps Mead and no lighting over the sports ground, which results in the area around the house and over the sports ground being dark. The proposed flood lighting will cause significant change and will impact on our lives. It is not only the density of light that we have impact, but the floodlight columns at the height, similar to our house, we believe will, we will suffer direct view of lighting elements. The lack of lighting in this rural area also means that the area is rich in nocturnal wildlife, providing natural hunting ground for animals like foxes, hedgehogs, uh, owls and bats. The flood lighting will disturb these nocturnal animals and birds that roost and nest in boundary hedgehogs. Both the lighting impact statement for obtrusive lighting and the design and access statement states that the lighting design has been made on the basis that are mature trees between the play area and the houses adjacent to the site. This is not true for properties in Copps Mead. <coughs> we, we obviously hope that you will reject this application, but if you, despite the neighbours' objections, you have in mind to approve the application, then we would ask you to, con to consider a condition of approval that high mature trees are planted to obscure the impact of the floodlights on mine and my neighbour's property as stated in the impact statement. And Steve, uh, Stephen um, Mortimer, who's from Denmark Avenue, if I can just read his statement. He said, I want to focus on the other potential pollutant that these uh, plans result in, and that is noise. It is accepted by all the residents of the area that normal term time noise from the children playing in the field and surrounding areas is an acceptable consequence of living near a college of this type. However, opening up this facility to outside use at weekends and evening up to 10 p.m. is very disturbing. These planned additional times are the very ones that my neighbour and I like to spend peaceful in our garden. I have played amateur football myself and I can already anticipate the likely increase in noise pollution generated by 22 adults on a full-size pitch. Uh, this will include ball impact sounds, excessive shouting, yelling whistles and the likely production of foul language. If the council approves this plan, I would wish for them to consider erecting acoustic fencing at the back of my house where it meets the school field. My home is potentially the nearest house to the play area and this would minimise the impact of the increase in noise. Thank you very much. <coughs> Next we have Andy Carter, the agent. About to come forward, welcome.
Thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity to address members of the planning committee. Uh, my name is Andy Carter. I represent the college for this application. Um, the officer's report, which you've all read, has set out the details of the planning application with conditional recommendation of approval. Um, Wingels College has been in its current built form since 2012 and has continued to maintain and achieve high standards of education performance, coming in the top 5% for A-levels and the top 25% for GCSEs nationally in 2017. The existing sports hall and a number of outdoor sports facilities date from before the college was rebuilt in 2012. Current, the current proposals provide an opportunity to replace poor quality tennis courts with an all weather pitch suitable for 11 a side football. <coughs> this is considered to enhance the sports facilities for students and also the wider community. The officer's report has sought to address the matters of noise and lighting impact from the multi use games area. The location of the multi use games area will be 100 metres from the nearest habitable room window on Denmark Avenue. It will also be shielded by the existing 8 metre high sports hall, thus reducing the potential for noise and lighting impact. The flood lighting has been designed by the lighting consultant who oversaw the installation of the flood lights for the multi-use games area immediately, immediately to the east of the proposed sports pitch. The design of the lighting ensures minimal light spill. Further assessment of this element is covered in paragraph 24 of the officer's report. <coughs> The Environmental Health Officer has concluded that the impact of amenity on surrounding residents would be acceptable. Consultee comments were made regarding the use of Denmark Avenue, uh, pedestrian access outside of school hours, and an associated increase in parking on the residential streets. The Officer has proposed a condition securing an overnight closure of this access to encourage parking within the college's car park, and the college is accepting of that. Sport England have noted that there is currently a need for all-weather pitches in the Wokingham area due to an identified under-provision. The pitch would perform a community use function outside of college hours. This would have the benefit of providing an income source to the college, but also answering the need identified by Sport England. The hours of proposed use by the college are consistent with the approved floodlight pitch to the east of the site. In summary, the college are seeking to enhance their sports facilities for the students and the wider community. Whilst the chosen location of the multi-use multi games area would result in a minimum impact to neighbouring residents. The conditions proposed by the officer, which I can see have been added to, would further ensure that the use was adequately controlled. Thank you for your time. Can you just press the button? Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, the last um, speaker we have then is Councillor Keith Baker. If you'd like to come forward, welcome. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, you will have seen in the design and access statement about the existing consent to add floodlights to the existing, I'm going to call it MUGA, uh, at the same time, approved in January 2017. I know each application needs to be evaluated on its own, but there is a temptation, consciously or unconsciously, to think that since there was approval for those floodlights on the existing matter, why the objections? Well, the rationale for the change in objections is twofold. First of all, the new mugger is now some 150 metres closer to Cotsmead and Denmark Avenue than the existing mugger. That is a reduction in the gap of 68%. Second, the height of the lights is increased by a third from 10 metres to 15 metres. I can understand why the new mugger needs to be closer simply because really it's the only available space. But I do not understand why they need to place these lights higher than the existing uh, mugger's lights which are going to be installed in the future. It can't be because the playing space is bigger as they have been covered by increasing the number of lights from 6 to 8. I'd like to now turn to the statement of community involvement, which is an important statement regarding the sporting facilities in the area. There is an ex extensive list of existing local facilities there. In 5.2, that document states, with the exception of Woodford Park Leisure Centre, there is an under provision of pay and play facilities for the Wood Woodley area. Unfortunately, the applicant neg neglects to mention a facility called Goals, in Woodlands Avenue in Woodley, which is a pay and play facility. This is huge. 
uh, facility in Woodley, and probably the number of available pitches there is more than Woodford Park and this proposal added together. So I do not believe you can assert under this uh, statement that there is an under provision when this major contributor to that provision has been ignored. So in conclusion, if you are minded to approve, I would like you to consider the following changes or conditions. First of all, to lower the height of the lighting columns to that of the other lugger to lessen the impact. Secondly, to place a small number of semi-maturable trees alongside the Coxmead boundary. Third, to extend the existing noise barrier to encompass the houses which are now in direct line with the new mugger. And finally, number four, to limit the hours of operation on Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Sundays 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you very much. Right, before I do open it up to uh, members, as I always come back to the case officer to answer the, um, the key questions that the speakers have brought up. Uh, I think Keith, or well, Councillor Baker there, has summed up what all of the, the speakers have said in those last four points. So if you could pass the comment, please, on the lowering height of the floodlights, the, um, the addition of the, the trees for Cops Mead, the noise barrier, and <laughs> reducing the number of hours that the floodlights uh, are on. So those four points, please. Um, the height of the uh, light towers is primarily dictated by uh, the size of the pitch, so it allows light to project more in a downward direction rather than um, if they are at a lower height, they would have to project more in a diagonal projection to cover the entire pitch, given it's the size of the football pitch. So that's the intent behind the, the, the height of the towers. Um, if it is an amenity concern in terms of the visual appearance of them, there is um, they are retractable towers and they'll only be in use at night time when they're less visible um, than they would in daylight hours. If it is a, a, a light spillage concern, the um, light analysis has shown that the, the impact on the boundaries of the property is um, negligible to, to almost nil. Um, the red dots shown on the screen are, is where the, the predominance of the, the light spillage is and the, um, the, the most um, outer ring of, of light spillage is well below the acceptable levels. Um, it is acknowledged that there will be some, that the lights will be visible in distant views but that is, would, would be an inevitable um, outcome of any lighting. Um, so it is not considered that the, the lowering of the light, um, lights to meet the height of the lights to the adjoining um, pitch is necessary. Um, in terms of establishing trees on the boundary, um, that could be something that could be achieved except that um, condition four of the recommendation, sorry, condition three of the recommendation requires a noise assessment. Um, and this goes to the second issue about an acoustic barrier if it's felt necessary by a council's environmental health officer once they review the pre-commencement condition that there is a requirement for, for additional measures. These could include an acoustic barrier, but these will be discussed, um, assessed once it's established what the impact of the, um, the, the, the use of the facility is. Um, so they may well be something that, that comes up, but at present it's not felt necessary um, given the scope of the application. Um, the establishment of trees, um, I'm not entirely sure of the purpose of whether it's to screen the, the lighting or whether, whether it's to uh, allow for some um, noise amelioration. Um, if it is for screening the lighting, then the trees would have to be at substantial height to cover the, the, vis the visibility of the lights, um, given they are 15 metres high. Um, given the amenity impacts were considered acceptable, um, it was felt that the hours of use as conditioned were reasonable in this instance. Um, just touching on one other point in terms of under provision in the area, Sport England were consulted and they felt their feedback was that there was um, a demand for at least eight 
uh, facilities in the wider area. So there was um, strategic need for that facility. Um, and if there is an under provision, it's, it's noted that this facility's primary use is for the use by the school. So if it is not used in the you know, night time, uh, that would be of benefit to the residents given it's not being used and there's no actual impacts arising from that. Thank you very much. Well, I'm sure members now will dig deeper into those questions. I, Councillor Smith was first. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, but yeah, one point of clarification. You're saying that if the uh, lights were at a lower height, say down to 10 metres, they would be angled. Would that then increase the light pollution onto the houses rather than diminish it? That's the first question. The second question is the uh, existing sports hall that uh, is between the mother and the housing would act as a natural sound barrier anyway, would it? That seems to be the closest of the buildings. And uh, we've got 100 metres between the sports, uh, sorry, the mother and the housing, which is considerably uh, greater distance than has already been mentioned, the ones that are present in Woodley. Um, already at uh, Woodford Park, so it would appear that the distance between the lighting columns and the housing is much greater here. Uh, so for that point, uh, it's the light pollution. It seems to me that we're, we're <laughs> everybody seems happy with the proposal of the uh, rubber being uh, built, but it's the conditions that are attached to it, so it really comes down to just the lighting and the noise. As I say, with the 10 metre lighting, it seems to me that what you were saying is if you angle it, it would be greater light pollution on the houses because of the angling. Am I right? Uh, that is correct. If you view if you where the cursor is at the moment, that answering one part of your question is this building here does affect the, the way that the lights build first. So you can see that there's a concentration here. <coughs> the building actually stops that light spillage going in that direction. Um, Again, the height of 50 metres height, if it is lower height, then you would get more of a projection of this red line area around this area and projecting further away. It is likely that um, it would still be compliant to the boundary. Um, I'm beyond that, I'm not a, a light expert to be able to provide you details in terms of what that would do by lowering the, 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 the light towers, what that would do to the um, findings of this. Um, lighting system. <coughs> okay, Councillor okay. Smith and then Michelle. A few questions. Um, I didn't really understand the point raised by Tom Barker about the waste. Perhaps you could expand on that. And is it a hazardous waste that we've got to worry about, or is it just the quantity of waste? Um, hours of use, as Councillor Baker states, have we done full analysis on the usage um, of goals, for example, um, on these extended hours? So, for example, reducing it to nine o'clock, what impact would that have on this facility? Does it add an advantage to this facility, or does it go over till 10? And is there, is there a need to upset neighbours and extend it to 10 o'clock when nine might be quite sufficient? Um, and I agree, I, I, I don't know why we're going to 10. Um, you did say that you are not a lighting expert, but I can't remember which application it was, but we have had one here recently where we did discuss in length the LED lights and the height required, i.e. do we really need 15 metres? Because that's about five metres higher than, higher than a domestic house. And I thought that there was a develop, development that you could have like a shading effect that comes down and it directs it exactly where you want it. <coughs> so, but I don't, I don't know if you know the answer to that. Um, your answer to the acoustic fencing worries me because uh, where do you take where do you take usage and volume of usage and noise? Are you going to take that at capacity, and what are you going to compare it to? Are you going to go to a site like Goals and um, 
on a very busy afternoon because it gets very busy in Wales. I know on some some afternoons I've kept my sons there, and then because you say if it's deemed that it's acceptable, well, who deems it acceptable? Um, that's it. The waste, the, the concern surrounding waste um, was considered, um, didn't warrant a, a, a specific condition, primarily because it, it's not dissimilar to any other planning application you would receive in terms of the scale of the demolition works and, and the removal of waste from the site. Additionally, there is sufficient space in the storage of the waste, and given it's a school, it will be removed from the site, so there wasn't any particular circumstances in this application that would warrant a condition to be applied. Um, what waste is it? Just standard building waste. Oh, okay. um, so you'd be dealing with the, the demolition of part of the um, this area here is the storage shed to the sports hall that will be demolished. No, just brick. Uh, and then the finishing, uh, the fencing around the court and then the surface material of the court. Um, that would just be dealt with in its ordinary manner. Um, the hours of use were proposed to 10 p.m. and that's all was looked at in terms of um, whether or not that were acceptable based on the amenity impact of the surrounding residents. So we haven't gone beyond that in terms of given it was acceptable, we haven't looked at any further impacts of reducing the, the, the proposed hours of use beyond Sunday given um, it's a Sunday and it's felt that, 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 that uh, it would be prudent to reduce the hours on Sunday given less usage on, on that week on a Sunday. Um, in terms of the height of the, the, the light towers, um, paragraph 24 does detail in some detail how the lights would be um, installed. Um, they will uh, sorry, paragraph 23. Um, they will include okay, we'll be here. Yeah, sorry, paragraph 23, the um, last sentence of that page. The lights will have a rear shields and baffles on the northern lights to minimise light spill towards the rail line and residential properties. Um, the southern lights are more screened by the building, um, the sports hall and other buildings in the area. Um, so the primary, as my understanding is, the primary reason under the 15 metre height is to project down onto the pitch. Um, it is able to be modified, the lighting can be modified given the type of views, but given sort of football pitch, it needs to cover the entire pitch, which is upwards of 50 metres wide. Um, apologies, the last concern was the... Acoustic fencing. Acoustic fencing. Um, I, I'm guided here by the Environmental Health Officer. Um, their comment was that they did raise some concern with the application based on noise impact. Their reasoning was that it's, it is a semi-rural area, but they also felt that it was not unacceptable in its current proposal to, to warrant refusal, and they felt that there would be methods that could have achieved an acceptable outcome, and those methods are, are sub subject to further assessment in terms of what impact there will be in terms of usage. So that would, I would envisage, involve um, a review of similar facilities and the, the noise <laughs> arising from those facilities. Um, that's, that's great, thanks. Um, how, how do we then, because I, I don't think from what I'm hearing that there is any issue with the actual proposal of having this at this facility. The issues are around the opening hours, the potential news, and it sounds like that, that's been covered off, um, and the height. Now, again, I'm not going to go into it because I don't think we know the answer here, because one way of sorting out the issue of flood lighting is you put more in so that they're more condensed. You bring the light round, light the height down, you put more lights in, and so therefore you don't have this exposure effect but I don't suppose we can answer this. How, how do we address the issue of opening hours when we've got two other sites? Woodley is very blessed with having Woodford Park and Goals that are, well, one of them being a very good commercial business. How, how do we address the opening hours issue? Yeah, please. 
Uh, Brian, can I just come back to this? I've, um, I've just been looking up the um, website's reach uh, facility. So uh, Woodford Park advertises till 9 p.m. and Gold advertises till 11 p.m. That's my point. Doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. That's so, good. That's well, good. good. They don't need to go here then. <laughs> well, after nine, for example. Well, well, the one's eleven. Yeah, no, but that's goals. That that's quite some distance. It's not as close to residential dwellings as this is. Yes, is it? We've had it was. No, the goals isn't. Oh, no, goals isn't. Goals isn't. Who's no, talking no, about the park? Is. Yeah. Michelle. Uh, several questions. And the uh, football pitch that um, Wayne was talking about was the English Sports and Social Club for the Edinburgh and Walkian Football Club, which is a semi-professional club and actually has um, lights already. And the distance between the lights and the residence was between 10 and 30 feet, 30 meters away. So it's significantly closer than that. And they included a tannoy as well. Uh, so obviously, since we've already approved something very similar, it would be kind of difficult to do this. However, I do agree with Wayne and a few of the other speakers about 9 p.m. being a reasonable hour. If you know about having children, I can't say I have had children, but most of the people I know have got their children to bed by 8.30, and 8.30, 9-ish, something like that. Having Disturbing the children and disturbing the parents as a result would not be a positive thing. And as Bill has said, the other Woodford has only openings till 9 o'clock. Uh, lastly, I'll talk about the wildlife study you talked about. We have a term called commuting bats. Um, I'm just wondering about that. Have they actually checked the bat study to see if there are any bats in the local area and how it will be affected by it? They didn't say anything about that. They, they just assumed there wasn't going to be a problem, but they needed to actually check. Answering the last point first, um, paragraph 35 refers to the ecology state, so it was referred to Council's Ecology <laughs> Officer, and they've reviewed the lighting study um, and the impact of, on any potential habitats, including the rail corridor to the north. It is unlikely that there would be any significant impact in commuting or foraging bats, but they didn't actually check it to find out if there were any there. No, they haven't checked to see whether or not, because the um, the distance and uh, uh, of the bike spillage does not project into the where the habitat would be. And I still think the 9 p.m. closing time would be a much better time. Um, has been been so long in here, please. Sorry. I think 9 p.m. closing time would be a much better idea during the weekend on Saturdays, uh, considering everything, considering Woodford also has the same idea because it's near enough to houses that you don't want to move next to it. Let's put it this way. If you move there now and knew it was there, okay, but these people haven't been there, haven't had one before, and you're putting something in that's an attractive nuisance. Malcolm. Thank you. <coughs> a couple of comments and a couple of questions. Um, I too remember a previous uh, discussion about lights on uh, football grounds and so on. It is very much more scientific uh, offering now than it used to be. I understand that they can set up the lights, angles and so on, to provide, to provide coverage uh, without dazzling anybody. Um, so I assume if this is a specialist type company, they'll be doing much the same thing there. Um, I don't feel too worried about the request to shorten the thing uh, to 9 instead of 10. I don't feel strongly either way on that. But I do have a question there, which is, uh, as it's a field with golf, there's probably not a lot of setting up and uh, thing to do. But uh, can I ask, do they normally, would they normally be permitted if the game finished uh, to go beyond 10 o'clock in terms of, okay, 10 o'clock they have to be away, so the game would have to finish 9.30 or something yes. anyway. Okay. Which means if you, which you shorten it to nine, it means I have to finish playing by about 8.30. Uh, I don't feel too strongly about the hours. Uh, I think the lights is a technical reason. Um, the, the other point about um, the lights, though, is that presumably during games in summer and spring, daytime, you wouldn't have the lights on anyway, would you? So it's only during the evening the lights become an issue, which is a relatively, I imagine, a relatively small part of the overall year. 
and we don't uh, imagine you don't stick floodlights on at three o'clock in the summer's afternoon, Dick, for a game. So it's a it's, it's not a full year thing; it's a, a shorter time. Um, and the, the last question or comment is, uh, I think as well that the income will be of use to the school, and uh, it seems to me that if uh, if schools are uh, in need of income, and this is a way of providing it, and it's a healthy sort of income which the school children themselves can use, as well as the community. That sounds a, a fairly useful thing. I don't know about the activity levels or the booking levels at the other the other grounds in Woodley. Obviously, if they're going to start using this, it'll have an effect on, or potentially, have an impact on the others. So I don't feel strongly about the hours. I think the lights probably have a very good reason, but I have got questions about, um, <coughs> to confirm or not, the lights won't be on for most of the time, except during winter. Can you just come back to that case? Um, condition, <laughs> condition six, as amended in the members' um, update, um, refers to um, a we got the hours of 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. But at all the event, we Correct. I'm just referring to the last sentence. With lighting to be operated by a secure lock will automate time control switch and lighting to remain off when there are no bookings for pitch or when the pitch is not in use. So um, it, it will automatically go off at 10 p.m. Um, regardless of whether or not somebody is there. It, it, it's a pay and play facility, so there will be bookings so they'll be booked to a certain period of time um, and at 10 o'clock they'll, they'll have to leave the facility um, and there is existing lighting within the school that will allow them to leave without having uh, any problems. Okay. Um, there was just the, the noise level where people score goals and so on. Uh, I'm assuming that if they need to be away at 10 they stop playing at 9.30 the noise from goal scoring in the match will also be correspondingly earlier. So I don't think the the hours necessarily would be a major problem for the locals in comparison with the other problems. Mm -hmm. So it's not quite true that the floodlights go off at 10. What time would the actual booking be? We're thinking that would be 10 o'clock in there. Uh, the booking would be, I presume, from like 9 to 10, uh, an hour booking that was, yeah, so. They could play football right up till 10 and then just wander off and turn the lights off. Uh, I, I don't actually. The wording of the condition means that the, t the lights should be off at 10 pm or will be off at 10 pm. So the booking may be until 9.45, 9.50 and then allowing the time to, to pack up and leave the facility. So the noise level would stop earlier? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Councillor Ross. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think probably all the questions have been asked now. Um, on the lighting, I believe that uh, this is probably a better situation than I've got in many other similar uh, facilities. Uh, and 100 metres uh, to the actual housing uh, does seem to be more than adequate in terms of uh, ensuring with modern lighting, as, as Malcolm has said, uh, which is very directionally uh, controlled. Uh, doesn't present a problem. Um, in terms of the timing, uh, I think this is probably the more difficult one. If I'm right in saying, comparing with goals, first goals is quite a long way away from here. Probably the Chargill um, facility is closer to, to uh, uh, Wayne Jaws than, than goals. And I think I'm right in saying goals doesn't provide 11 aside football, it's uh, 7 aside. So in terms of what is uh, used and what is required, uh, they, they don't compare that much. Um, if the committee was to minded to reduce the timing to a nine, it would leave the school open, of course, if uh, it, it didn't present the problems that people are fearing, uh, to come back to this committee at a later date and ask for a, a, a change to, to that condition uh, to extend it back to 10, so um, that maybe is a way forward. Um, the noise, um, I think it's a bit uh, uncertain where we are with that, with what is put in condition three. Um, 
we've still got to do this noise assessment uh, and then therefore what um, that produces, what barriers uh, might then be needed or whether trees would suffice. Um, might I suggest that um, when that all comes back it should come back to the chairman and the vice chairman um, to, to approve what, he, what he's done. Before you respond to Councillor Ross, on, on, on the noise, is there set standards that it has to be less than when you do the monitoring and then if it's above it, then it kicks in that you'll have to do things to, to mitigate it? Uh, I'll preface my comment by saying that I'm not uh, an acoustic expert, but there would be um, a, a standard that it needs to meet um, decibels above background noise level um, uh, at a certain time. Um, I think 10, I think 11 p.m. is the normal, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. is the normal time, so um, as a daytime facility, if that makes sense. Um, so it would need to meet that, that standard. Um, and if it doesn't, then I would need to, to provide some acoustic treatment to the, to the facility. Does that answer the question? Justin, can you add any more to that? Yeah, I think in short, we're guided by the environmental health officers on this. If, if and when the noise survey is carried out and the EHOs are satisfied that no further mitigation is required, that's what they'll say. If they're saying that mitigation is required, i.e. Uh, noise screen around the, around the facility, because it, it doesn't meet their, their preferred standards, then yes, um, but then that's what they have to do under that condition. Just so we're all clear, then, it won't be their opinion, it'll be meeting a set standard of noise. Yeah, and as I say, we're guided by the HAs, but I, I, don't, I couldn't tell you what if they say <coughs> it exceeds X decibels, it'll need this mitigation. But, but yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be looking to a standard. Okay. Did, did you have, Councillor Ross, did you have all your questions answered there? Yeah. Okay. Right. Councillor Charles. Yeah, I, I too am very concerned about the um, lighting and I can understand that uh, 15 and a half metres will direct it down but from the 15 and a half metres down these lights are very intense and very bright therefore the whole pitch up to 15 and a half metres will be bright and that brightness will go across to the local residents. I'm, I feel that if we lowered it to 10, 10 metres, 10 and a half metres we have less impact on the locality and on the residents. Could that um, condition be added and that they could put in additional lighting columns with sufficient baffles on the columns to prevent any light leaving the area of the pitch? Yeah, I think we've, we've already demonstrated here that the level of lights below is minimal to, to residents. What, what you're saying is that effectively you want more lighting and you want it angled so that it would be going across rather than down. So I think it, you, you're solving a problem but creating another problem. Although the, the, the first problem doesn't exist because the, the light skill plan shows that, it, that it's acceptable. Yeah, but with sufficient baffles on the light, she's actually directed down, not, not spilling out. My concern is if you look at Canopy Park from a distance, from where the lights are all the way down, 